The following tutorial will explain how to annotate an inverse gene-for-gene -gene interaction in Ficanto. In this tutorial video, I will be demonstrating how to curate an inverse gene-for-gene -gene interaction. This type of interactions take place between a, an effector, uh, in this case it's from a necrotrophic fungus, and a host susceptibility gene. And when recognition takes place, what we have is susceptibility from the side of the host and not resistance. So the first thing to do before we start annotating metagenotypes and their phenotypes is to define some Go terms that are key for um, this type of interactions. So we need to go to the effector and we need to define a Go term for the biological process. In this case, we are going to be using the effector-mediated induction of plant hypersensitive response by a symbiont. There are no child terms and we don't need one, so then proceed. I need to choose um, the evidence code for this, which in this case is inferred from an experiment. If you need help selecting the different options for the code terms, you can always go to our help section, or there is a video where we explain in more detail about go terms. Anyhow, let's go to proceed. There are annotation extensions that I can choose from, but um, I don't need any of them in this case. So then once I can proceed and I can put a figure or table or make a comment. I won't be doing this uh, for this curation. Then proceed. And I have my go term for biological process. So we have now curated the go term for biological process, but we can also curate um, a go term for the molecular function for tox1. So uh, we're going to cl click here. And the term that we're going to use is that we're having a pathogen derived receptor like activity. And the evidence code for this is that this was inferred from an experiment. And now we can choose uh, some annotation extensions um, that are important. So first of all, we can say um, what protein is being bound. And so this is the Uniprot uh, ID for the host's uh, protein. Good. We can also say that this is involved in a biological process, which is um, what we curated before. So this was um, the effector mediated induction of plant hypersensitive response by symbiont. Um, I'm not going to put any figure or comments, so then proceed. And um, we have now added the go term for um, molecular function for tox one So there are other go terms that would need to be curated for this publication. Um, these are terms for the host protein, uh, but um, I'm going to leave this here uh, and I'm going to focus on curating the metagenotypes. Um, for this inverse gene for gene interaction. So we're going to start curating now some phenotypes for, for our metagenotypes. And we're going to go on to the metagenotype management for that. So I have already created some metagenotypes, um, as you can see here. And we're going to be starting with the metagenotype that involves the wild type host uh, gene and the wild type a pathogens gene and we are going to be choosing this option which is to annotate a gene for gene phenotype. So the phenotype we'll be curating is the presence of pathogen necrotrophic effect mediated host program cell death. So this was observed with a macroscopic observation and it's a qualitative one. In experimental conditions I want to add the delivery mechanism which is the pathogen spray inoculation. So now I have to define the annotation extensions that I will be using. And this is very important. I need to choose the inverse gene for gene interaction option. As you can see, there are several options. Um, and so if 
I hover over one of them, I can see an explanation right that can help me decide whether this is the right option um, for my interaction. So in this case, we need to choose that we're having a compatible interaction because we're having a functional pathogen necrotrophic effector and we are having a functional host susceptibility locus. We can also describe the host uh, tissue that was infected, which in this case was the leaf. So this came from figure to B. And as you can see, I have now my metagenotype phenotype curated. So now let's go once again to the metagenotype management part. And the second phenotype I want to annotate is the one that corresponds to the interaction between the wild type pathogen gene and from the host. The difference here is that we're working with a different cultivar, which means that there is no copy of the susceptibility locus, so of the SNN1 gene. So we're going to go once again to the annotate gene for gene phenotype. And for this situation, we're having the absence, right, of a pathogen necrotrophic effector mediated host program salt death. So this was observed, uh, it was a microscopic observation and a qualitative one. The delivery mechanism remains the same. And here we go once again to the inverse gene for gene interaction section. And in this situation, we are having an incompatible interaction because we have the necrotrophic effector present, but we don't have uh, the um, host susceptibility locus. So we're going to report on the tissue that was infected, which was the leaf. So this came from figure 2D and I'm going to put a small comment. And so I have now curated the new phenotype. So now that I have curated this uh, phenotype for this metagenotype, I can use this as a control for the next genotype that I want to showcase. So let's go to the metagenotype management option and the metagenotype that I will now be um, working with is this one over here where we're having the pathogen um, effector TOX1 in, in its wild type uh, allele. But for the host, what has happened that the authors have added the susceptibility gene that this cultivar, Bob White, didn't have. As you remembered, the one that we have just curated, which will work as a control, did not have an endogenous copy of that gene. Well, it is transformed genotype has it now. So then let's go on to the annotate gene for gene option. The phenotype is now that we're having the presence of the pathogen necrotrophic effect mediated host program cell death. The evidence code is a microscopic observation and a qualitative one. Uh, the delivery mechanism is still pathogen spray inoculation. And once again, it is very important, we need to describe the inverse gene for gene interaction, which in this case is a compatible one because we are having the necrotrophic effector present, but we have gained a functional host susceptibility locus. We can say the host tissue that was infected, which was the leaf. And because we have created the control metagenotype already, then compare to control and it's this one over here. So this came from figure 2D and I want to add a small comment. And I have now the inverse gene for gene interaction curated. So before I show the next uh, metagenotype, I need to create a host genotype. So then let's go to host genotype management. And we're going to be creating another genotype. 
which is going to be a nonsense mutation. So the name for this allele, it's going to be SNN1. This was uh, a mutant that was creating using EMS. This was done on Chinese spring. And I now need to describe the mutation that I have, which is that a, the amino acid resorty is now stop coton. So uh, I need to also say the expression um, for this allele, which was not assayed in this case. And then, okay, good. Now that I have um, this genotype created, I can go on to the metagenotype management part. And I will be creating a new metagenotype between TOX1 and this new allele. So then let's make metagenotype and it appears here. So let's annotate a gene for gene phenotype. So the phenotype that we're having now is the absence of uh, the program cell death. This was observed macroscopically, qualitative observation, delivery mechanism is the same. And once again, we need to say what type of inverse gene for gene interaction we have. And in this case, we are having an incompatible interaction because we have the uh, nicotrophic effector, but the host susceptibility locus has been compromised because that allele was uh, mutated. Good. Let's just say the tissue, which is once again the leaf. And because we have already curated the control metagenotype for this interaction, we can select it. And it is this one over here. So this comes from figure 2b. And I want to add a comment. We now have our new inverse gene for gene interaction curated. So I have just shown you several examples of inverse gene for gene interactions. But just because you have that type of interaction between your pathogen's gene and your host gene, that doesn't mean that every phenotype needs to be curated um, as an inverse gene for gene interaction. And I'm just going to show you um, an example of an interaction that needs to be curated as a regular pathogen host phenotype. So we're going to go to metagenotype management for that. And we're going to go to one of the control metagenotypes that we have already used, which is the first one between the wild type pathogen allele and the wild type host allele and we're just going to annotate a pathogen host interaction phenotype. So in this case what we want to report is the absence of a pathogen host protein protein interaction. This was observed with a reporter gene assay so I don't want to specify any experimental conditions, so then proceed. And I can now report on the interaction partners, right, um, for this uh, phenotype. And it's just a drop-down menu that I have. So let's choose, it doesn't matter the order, so let's choose the gene for the host. And now we have to click here once again and choose the pathogen's gene. There isn't any other annotation extension that I want to use, so proceed. And this comes from figure S10. And I have quite a big comment that I want to add here. So proceed. And I have the pathogen host interaction phenotype. And as you can see, it's separate from the gene for gene phenotypes I had been describing previously. So now I want to curate um, what happens when I have a mutated 
version of the host gene, so we're just going to do a copy and edit. So I've had already created the metagenotype, so I can use this option and just select it from here. And it is this one over here. This new host allele is um, a deletion allele. We need to change the phenotype that we're reporting because now we are actually having the presence of pathogen host protein protein interaction. And now that we have this mutated allele from the host, I now need to add once again the annotation extension that I had used before, which was um, where I described the two proteins that were interacting. So let's choose one, click again, and let's choose the other one. Good. I don't need any of the others. And uh, deliver mechanism, I hadn't reported on that before. I not. I won't for this situation either. It's not needed. The comment remains the same and the figure number remains the same. So then let's click on OK. And if we go to our summary page and we scroll down, we have now this two new pathogen host interaction phenotypes that I have just curated, separated from the gene for gene phenotypes that I had shown before. One more thing we can do is curate the disease name. And for that, we need to go on to metagenotype management and diseases need to be curated for metagenotypes that are between the wild type pathogen gene and the wild type host gene. So then we're going to just click here where it says annotate disease name. And in this situation, we have the Septoria nodorum blotch. The tissue that's infected is the leaf. Um, I'm not going to add a figure number or any kind of comment, so proceed. And if we scroll down, we now have the disease name. If you need some more help, you can always go onto our help section and onto the gene for gene phenotype part. Or you can always contact us at Ficanto, where we'll be more than happy to help you.